And then I started listing all the uh, risks. Yeah. And uh, is it a form of edge play? Hello. Hi, everyone. Kayla Lords. John Brownstone. Of Loving BDSM, where we help kinksters like you have happy, healthy power exchange relationships. We are back with a five things you ought to know. Uh, we are going to attempt to share a few things we have learned and we know to be true about electroplay. Mm -hmm. That is a playing with electricity in a kinky way. We are not experts on this. Uh, we would absolutely consider these sort of beginner tips and then we highly recommend that you go forth and learn maybe uh, at a local demo at a club an online workshop from kink friends you know that have a lot of experience mm -hmm. in electroplay these are the keep these things in mind as you begin kind of tips uh, based on mm -hmm. what we have learned playing with electricity right. in kinky ways. I will link down in the description box to all the other times we have talked about products and our experiences with Electroplay mm -hmm. if you wanna do a deep dive into what we've said in the past. But yeah, so before we get into the five things, let's just sort of talk about what Electroplay is. Okay. Uh, you're playing with electricity in a sexy yeah. or kinky way. Sometimes <laughs> I see it called Electrosex, but not all play involves sex, so we just call it cool. electroplay. The definition is in the name. You're playing with electricity. And there are some things you absolutely have to keep in mind when you do that. <laughs> so let's get into our five. Okay, number one, electroplay doesn't have to be painful. It can be. It can True, it can be. It absolutely hurt. But if you are not a masochist or you're not a sadist and you don't want to play with pain, you can play with electricity and completely avoid pain. You'll know when you've hit your upper limit of that's too much. Mm -hmm. I would say that it is easier to play with electricity minus pain because it's essentially a sensation play by using a TENS unit. True. Uh, if you start pulling out the violet wands and other things that create like literal sparks on the skin, <laughs> uh, I have not yet had an experience where that didn't feel painful, but I also think yeah. that'll be about your own personal pain tolerance as well. Mm -hmm. So the thing to just realize about electroplay is while it can be painful, it's a sensation play and pain is just one sensation you might feel. Correct. Mm -hmm. Two, understand the risks before you play. I literally all had to write down a big long yeah. list of risks and I went to multiple sources. Um, some sources will only tell you some of this. Some sources will mention one or two of these. Um, I think the big thing to know is the definite risks. And then after that, it's about your risk tolerance and your own risk assessment. So here's what you need to know. And if I'm not looking at directly at the camera, it's because I'm reading. <laughs> <laughs> Avoid if you have heart issues, are pregnant, have epilepsy and or nerve damage. Nerve damage and epilepsy were new to me. I had heard about heart mm, problems and pregnancy. Yes. Don't do electroplay, and, but I did not know about the others. It's also not recommended to do any kind of electroplay if you have a pacemaker, insulin pump, or cochlear implant. Oh. Now, the insulin pump and the cochlear implant are also new to me, and I imagine it's about how those things work and operate and the electricity that they're using. Right. So specific questions um, if you are a person who has those inserted you should talk to your doctor do not apply <laughs> electricity around the chest area at all right. where the heart is because it's relying on electricity uh let us not give you a jump start right or near the brain right 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 no 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 where there's enough electrical <laughs> impulses there recommendations are don't do it on sunburns i wouldn't recommend that anyway that's yeah. hurt. open wounds please don't please don't do much play around open wounds uh, in general, <laughs> and make sure you're not doing it around metal jewelry or implants. Right. One of the biggest safety things I've heard people recommend is um, on jewelry, metal jewelry, just take it off. Take it off, remove right. it. And if you have a metal implant of some sort, again, talk to your doctor. Look, electroplay is, it's not, I don't think it's one of the, let me, let me put air quotes around the scarier kinks in terms of having mm -hmm. a conversation with a medical professional. Like you can even go, hey, I've got a TENS unit for muscle something, something. Can I use that near this part of my body and let your doctor tell yeah. you? It's also highly recommended that you be well rested and hydrated. I read one mm -hmm. article, I'm gonna link to the resources, but I read one article that was like, because of how electricity moves through the body, when you're not well rested, hydrated, you're feeling sick or down or uh, 
that can actually impact how your body handles electrical right. charges. And I that, had never heard that. And that makes a lot of sense because as someone who you has used a TENS unit for medical purposes, it stimulates muscles, mm -hmm. okay? And, and it actually gets those muscles moving. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, if you have a, a tense muscle, it helps it relax. When muscles move, that's movement. It requires lubrication. Water mm -hmm. is the lubrication for the muscles. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like this should go without saying. Please do not play with electricity around water. Bad. Your toys shouldn't be wet. You shouldn't Bad. be in the bathtub. Don't be in the pool. <laughs> Dry off. I mean, just... Just, yeah. And when I, then here's the thing. I never thought this before because the way we play with electroplay, I feel, I understand the risks, but I feel fairly safe. Mm -hmm. And then I started listing all the uh, risks. Yeah. And uh, is it a form of edge play? Well, you know, I, I think it could very easily be considered that. Um, for a long time, Rope bondage was not considered edge play, mm -hmm. but because of the propensity for nerve damage if done wrong, mm -hmm. many people now consider rope play as edge play. And any kink can come under this, but because in the case of rope bondage and definitely electroplay, you can take your play to such extremes mm -hmm. where you, and that's what edge play in my mind is, you play on the edge between outright danger and somebody's gonna get hurt versus right on that inside yeah. line of, we're aware of the risks, but we're kind of like playing jump rope with mm -hmm. the risks here. Um, and I think that if you're not careful or if you want to play with more intense forms of electricity, like turn the dial up kind of thing. Um, I think if based on your own personal risk tolerance, you go, okay, that's too edgy for me. I think that's fine. I think there are definitely ways to play safely as long as you understand the risks that we've mentioned here. Right. Um, but yeah, I think it, I, I think it makes me more nervous than it once I, did I, I and think I enjoy it. <laughs> Electroplay, I think, definitely falls under the category of RAC, risk-aware consensual kink. It all does. You for know, sure, for sure. Um, understand the risks, what they fully are, assess those risks for your own personal well-being, and, you know, go into it consensually. Absolutely. And I, I think that, first of all, RAC applies to all kinks, but mm -hmm. in the case of any kinky play like this, that one wrong move and bodily harm is absolutely done death is definitely <laughs> a real risk factor depending on your personal situation and how you're playing. Yeah. But don't just start applying electrodes to one another without having done your research first. Right. And if this video is part of your research, consider us one step along the way, okay? You're just like getting into the surface level stuff with us. Now it's time mm -hmm. to go learn from people who play with this all the time. Number three, there are multiple ways to play with electricity. Yes. And the two most common that come immediately to mind, if there are others mm -hmm. out there, I just don't have the experience with them, is a TENS unit or a device that is designed to be similar to a TENS unit. TENS has a long name and I'm going to put it on the screen uh, just in general because I'm not going to even remember how to say it. But basically it is a physical therapy kind of tool to yes. help with muscle stimulation. Our first uh, time playing with electricity was with your TENS unit that had been a medical device. Correct. And now we have retired the medical device and use our, uh, it's called the Axis from ElectroStim, which is a kink toy designed similarly to a TENS unit. We actually use for kink play and with kink toys, <laughs> full circle. <laughs> the other type of electrical toy is a violet wand. Mm -hmm. That is um, where you tend to get the sparks and the colors flying off of the surface level area of your skin. Yeah. And then within both, there can be attachments that change how you play with it. So with the TENS unit, I'm very aware of different sex toys that can be attached. Also, one of our favorite paddles, an electro paddle is attached to that unit mm -hmm. and then it that's what creates the stimulation violet wands can have attachments on the tip so that yes. it touches your skin in different ways to create different types of sensations mm -hmm. another thing that has started to become popular is um there is conductive rope is there really yes 
and we haven't played with it? No, no. We have to add that to the list. Right? Yeah, it's um, Electra Rope, and it has Mylar strands okay. woven through it. So how do, what does it connect to to create the... Um, I'm, I am not sure. I have not okay. looked into it that deeply, but there are a number of rope sellers out there now that are, are carrying this. Our next experiment. Right. Because hmm, we do enjoy Electroplay. Yes. Uh, and I might not be a total like rope bottom, totally into it, but I'm here for new you sensations. You might be convinced. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah we'll yeah. have to, yeah. See, you learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, there are many, 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 many ways to play with electricity, yeah. uh, depending on the base unit you have and then the attachments. Right. Mm -hmm. Number four, you'll need to get conductive gel for many forms of play. I did not know about the differences. I absolutely admit to being mostly a novice in terms of my knowledge because I'm here to play. That's what <laughs> I want to do. So I knew we use con uh, conductive gel in some play and not others. So right. when you use a TENS unit and apply the pads, the sticky pads to your skin, you don't need to use extra conductive gel. No, those, those go on just as they are. Mm -hmm. They adhere to the skin. It, it's a very light adhesive, mm -hmm. holds to the skin and peels off and you reuse the pads over and over. Right, exactly. However, when you start playing with like a cock ring attachment or mm -hmm. a paddle, the electro paddle, um, before you allow the uh, electrical part of it to touch your skin, you need to use a conductive gel. Right. There uh, is electro conductive gel that many of the Electroplay toy makers sell, but also you can use water-based lube. Mm -hmm. We have used, I've heard it said that you should only use water-based lube if you're doing internal play with Electroplay, but we have used water-based lube externally. Correct. And had a good experience. We are gonna try electro conductive gel externally mm -hmm to right. see if that creates some kind of different sensation. What, what, but. what we've noticed with the with the water-based lube is it does not last as long because yeah. it does dry quickly. Exactly, so the important thing to know is whatever toy you get or pervertible you make from an old TENS unit you've got or you go to the medical supply and you get a prescription for a TENS unit, uh, read the instructions for what you have to apply to your skin in order to mm -hmm. one, feel anything and two, not burn yourself. Right. Because burns are absolutely another risk of electroplay. Yeah. Um, the, a lot of common advice is like, if you're using a violet wand, you don't hold it in the same spot in over your skin for mm -hmm. too long because it'll burn the your skin. Right. So uh, yeah, just if you need gel, read the instructions, use the, the conductive gel that's recommended, use it in the way that the manufacturer tells you to yes. use it. Please, please, please. Again, to avoid risk and harm, but also so you can feel the most sensations. There you mm -hmm. go. It brings us to number five, start low and slow. Y'all, we say this with every kink thing. Yeah. Uh, if you are super, super into the idea of like electroplay and you're like, yes, let's shock somebody. That's lovely. <laughs> I still want you to start on the lowest dial that is available on your toy. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing to know about like the difference between the TENS unit and like the violet wand, for example, just the yeah. base units. In my experience, and I'm just one person talking about sensations, the TENS unit, the way it is designed, those sensations are deeper in the muscle. To me, mm -hmm. they're very vibrating and thumpy. If you turn the dial up too much, it becomes very sharp and painful. And it's um, yeah. a muscle deep kind of pain. And it's not pleasant to me. I don't enjoy mm -hmm. that. The violet wand and those attachments are surface level. Yeah, you feel it, you know, in within your body, but it starts at the skin level. And that's where the zap is kind of felt first. And right. to me, most sharply. Uh, if we're thinking in terms of types of sensation, I have long said I'm a thuddy, thumpy, throbby girl. <laughs> I like the types of electroplay that use a TENS unit or a device yeah. that's designed after a TENS mm -hmm. unit. The axis from Electrostim being the yeah. one we have is an example of that. Um, and then every attachment we've used, when I feel the electricity, it's that pulsy, throbby, thuddy feeling. When we've played with our violet wand and other things, that's very sharp and stingy. Mm -hmm. The same way I describe impact play. I prefer thuddy. I don't like sharp and stingy. If you like sharp and stingy, you can get that with a TENS unit device. But uh, to me, you get it easier with like a violet wand. Mm -hmm. But all of those things have settings and dials and you start at the lowest and you 
incrementally inch up. Right. With the TENS unit devices, you'll sometimes, depending on the muscle you put it on, I won't even feel anything until you've clicked that dial a few times. Right, yeah. And then there can be a very fine line between... I totally feel it and it feels good. And OMG, no, no, too much. Go back down one. <laughs> also, the level that I need for stimulation will depend on which muscle group is getting the attention. Correct. Bigger muscle groups, you tend to have to turn up the dial. Smaller areas or areas where my skin may be a little bit thinner in those mm -hmm. areas, I don't, don't need, need as much. much. Yeah. So always start slow. Always start low. Start with more basic items before you ramp up into insertables and attachments and whatever get good at the basics and figure out where your different tolerances are if you're the bottom before you start trying to do like electroplate acrobatics mm -hmm. okay because of the risks there are very real risks of harm here it's fun if yeah. you enjoy this sensation it's a ton of fun i love it when we do it when we find the right toy mm -hmm. with the right level and we're really getting into it, it's fun for sensation. It can be fun as a masochist. It's fun for just experimenting with new things right. and seeing what can my body feel. I know, I believe that you enjoy the control and watching me jump and hearing mm -hmm. me like cry out and yep. like we get what we need from it, mm -hmm. but we also go into it knowing there's gotta be a level for us, a line that we won't cross because now we've crossed into very real danger. Yeah. Which is why just putting this together, I was like, is this a is this a form of edge play? And there are people out there who would say all kinks are edge That's play. That's true. Because there is an extreme that you can take any kink activity yeah. to. For me, electroplay, knowing the risks, even though for most of the things you have to assess for, I don't have to worry about it. First of all, if I have an open wound, you're not coming near me anyway. I don't want to play with nobody when I'm <laughs> healing from something or have a sunburn, but you know, I don't have heart issues. I'm not pregnant. Right. I don't have things implanted in my body, but a lot of people can fall into that. And yes. so it is extremely important to know the risks, do your own risk assessment, talk mm -hmm. about it openly and honestly, play within the boundaries that you set for yourself. Don't be afraid to pull back those boundaries and make it a smaller thing. Don't be afraid once you do get comfortable to expand those boundaries. Right. That's the why we always say slow and low and take your time because you can always expand on what you're willing That's to do true. and what you like. You can always contract that as well. But what happens is if you start with a really big boundary, like you're like, oh, sky's the limit. There's not a, a true boundary. It'll be a while before you get there. And the very first thing you feel out of the gate is excruciating, terrifying pain or a sensation you don't ever want to experience again. Yeah. That makes it harder to be willing to go play a second time. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you start soft and, and, and quietly, and you build up to find your, it's more fun. You're more interested gives to go try again. Gives it some anticipation. Too. There's that too. Yeah. There's that too. And then, and you can feel safe in what you're doing and then right. spread your wings from there to mm -hmm. kill 85 metaphors in one sentence. <laughs> so no, we are not experts on electroplay. Mm -hmm. It just happens to be one of our mutual kinks. We have played several times with multiple toys these are the things that if you're getting into it, definitely keep in mind, but don't end your research with us. Yeah. Start with us and then move on to people who mm -hmm. have even more experience and who can talk about it in terms of trying to educate, you know, here are the things to keep in mind. Online workshops are great if you don't have access to a local club or um, community. If you do have access to a local BDSM dungeon or membership group and they offer demos and workshops, take a look at that there's mm -hmm. videos there's books i'm sure i'm positive uh the pink king podcast yes uh they talk about electroplay mm -hmm. cred very credibly one of the co-hosts her um electric khaleesi yes. if i'm not mistaken yes um, so that that's their big thing is electroplay absolutely definitely go check out mm -hmm. that podcast i'll link to the podcast uh mm -hmm. in the places so yeah, if, you, if you've come across us and you're like, okay, those are good tips, yeah, we're just a starting point. Let's mm -hmm. be very clear here. But that is all we've got on that. Mm -hmm. Links in the places for other things we've said, our own resources, plus other places where we know you can get better, good information from people who know what they're talking about. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
have fun and good luck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if you yourself are a person who is into electroplay, drop some comments below on other things you want people to know, risks to be aware of, things you've experienced, anything you're willing to share so that other people who are learning about electroplay uh, can learn from more than just us. But with that, that is it for us. Mm. If you enjoyed this, we love a thumbs up. If you like it enough to want to come back for more, please consider subscribing. And once you subscribe, ring the notification bell to get updates of new content. Sure. Just do what Danny says. And if you really enjoy what we do, <laughs> want to help us do more of it, get access to stuff you can't get anywhere else, so join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Bye. Bye.